हाय एवरीवन वेलकम टू जॉब टिक्की आज मेनी ऑफ यू आस्ट फॉर कपका स्ट्रीम्स आई एम किकिंग ऑफ ए ब्रांड न्यू सीरीज इन दिस सीरीज विल गो स्टेप बाय स्टेप फ्रॉम अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट एंड व्हाई कपका स्ट्रीम टू बिल्डिंग रियल टाइम डेटा प्रोसेसिंग पाइपलाइंस एंड विल आल्सो एक्सप्लोर डिफरेंट कपका स्ट्रीम ऑपरेशन ऑल विद स्प्रिंग बूट हैंडसन एग्जांपल ओके सो इफ यू ऑलरेडी नो how kapka producer and consumer work then this series will take you to the next level you will learn how to process transform and enrich the data on the fly using kapka streams as always i'll keep it practical and easy to follow so by the end you will have a complete real time understanding from zero to advance okay all right so let's begin with the very basic what is kapka stream and why do we need it that is the first thing we should know before start working with kapka stream okay so let's get started if you have already worked with kapka producer and consumers then you probably know how great kapka is for moving data between microservices right you have got your producer they publish a right event to the topic and then you also have your consumer who listen or read from that topic and process those events simple enough right now you might have a question since we already have kapka who easily handle streams of data so well then why do we need even this kapka stream is this something a new feature or is this something a new framework that's really a good question so instead of giving a boring theoretical definition let me walk you through a real world use case that clearly show you how kapka streams solves real time problem or that will give you the clear picture why do we need kapka stream in real time now imagine this you are working at a food delivery company like sugi or zomato every few seconds thousand of delivery update are flying into your kapka topic like order accepted order picked up or order delivered okay so you have got a consumer application that continuously process these events simple right now one day my manager asked me hey can you design a real time delivery progress dashboard something that shows how many orders are active how many orders are delayed or how many orders are delivered and it should auto update in every minutes or maybe in every hour or even every day something like this you should create a dashboard and dashboard should display the count of active delayed and delivered order now being a smart developer i confidently said yes i can do it it's dead easy because initially i thought i have a kapka consumer so i'll start reading messages from the topic and push them to the dashboard by writing some custom aggregation logic but here are the challenges i faced when i started working on it i realized my consumer has a stateless in nature stateless meaning it does not remember what happened before for example let's assume i have these three event a b and c okay now when my consumer is consume the event a now again when i consume event b then i don't remember what was there in event a similarly by the time event c comes event b is also gone from memory usually i don't keep state of my previous event in my consumer code that's the real problem then how do you calculate things like active delayed or delivered order if your consumer can't even remember the previous event because to aggregate filter or join the events you need to maintain a state to evaluate results like total counts then only you can display that number in the dashboard right so it's really difficult to design using plain kapka you would have to manually handle a bunch of things like once you consume the event you need to update the database next you need to maintain and aggregate the count like how many is are active delayed and delivered then you also need to cache them to avoid multiple db hits and also the tricky part you need to write the query which will hit your db get the records and push it to the dashboard continuously 
either using web socket or server side event you need to implement any logic to auto update your dashboard okay looks too complex right something like this if you check the code you are writing the records to the dv then you have written the query to fetch by status how many are active delayed and delivered then you put them into the cache as a in memory storage then you broadcast that to the dashboard by using web socket or server side event or any streaming mechanism and mostly if you see the pseudo code we end up writing tons of extra code just to handle the state aggregation and data consistency and it does not stop here you also have to carefully manage the offset otherwise you risk losing the messages or processing duplicates especially during the crashes or kafka revalence then comes the thread safety and scaling header creating multiple consumers assigning partitions manually ensuring everything runs in sync is really difficult if you handle it manually right all this drama we are just doing to enrich or aggregate messages in real time that's really too painful to handle using plain kafka consumers isn't it because you need to write the bunch of code you need to handle the offset manually you need to deal with scaling and thread management so that's really a difficult task if you want to design that using plain kafka consumers now the question is how do we fix this mess how we can overcome this well that's exactly where kafka streams comes into the picture now what does the kafka stream do here once your producer send events to the topic this kafka stream application subscribe to the topic and read the data then it process aggregate and enrich the data in real time then finally it write the transform data back to the topic okay how simple is this isn't it just three step and you can handle even the most complex real time data enrichment logic on the fly your kafka stream application simply read the event from topic then it did the data enrichment then it write back to the destination that's the simple flow of kafka stream application so don't worry about how all this magic works internally we'll dive deep into that in my upcoming videos when we'll start writing the code using kafka stream app okay but at high level kafka stream design with multiple processor source processor read data from the source topic stream processor who process or enrich the data then sync processor who write the result back to the destination topic and all three processor together called as a single topology in kafka stream that's it as simple as that so now you have got a basic idea of what kafka stream is and why we need it so i don't think i need to give you the definition to understand what is kafka stream now okay if you are with me next let's explore the api that kafka stream provide to work with this processor and build real time data pipelines basically kafka streams give you two main api stream dsl and processor api so this stream dsl is most commonly used it's the declarative way to design your kafka stream application you define what to do and streams handle the how how to do it that will be handled by this kafka stream and you need to mostly play with stream builder k stream k table okay again you no need to worry about this term we'll understand everything in details in my upcoming videos okay next one is the processor api which is a low level api you will have the more control on this approach but you need to write more boilerplate code and you need to manually create the processor and topology all these things you need to write manually okay however the stream dsl is just abstract on top of processor api where you can simply define what to do and how part will be take care by this kafka stream you no need to hit your head to understand how to create processor how to create topology if you are using stream dsl high level api again i repeat 
you no need to get tense by hearing this particular uh, terminology you will understand everything in details okay so i believe that's enough to get started with kafka stream so in my upcoming videos we'll get our hands dirty and we'll see how to build a kafka stream application using spring boot step by step from setup to seeing the live data transformation in action okay until then keep learning keep coding and i will see you in the next video